going on chat hello <clears throat> what's happening what's happening hello 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 uh thank you for five appreciate that thank you much thank you thank you thank you <laughs> doctors in the okay guy okay guy <laughs> uh there's a bunch of these to go through uh first off uh while i was offline is it 63 gifted subs from spanner while i was offline is it 63 i think it was 63 uh thank you for that holy shit can I get some hearts up in chat now it's 68 thank you very much spanner for the 68 gifted subs uh literally as i was offline Make sure you show some hearts up a Jeff Spanner for that. Appreciate it heavily. Thank you. And also a tier three sub of her own. Uh, two years of the best years that were full of entertainment, laughter, uh, <clears throat> thrills, chill times, emotional terrorism. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh, that doesn't happen here. And what are you talking about? <laughs> One changer for the bit. Uh, <clears throat> well, except for more streams, maybe. I appreciate it, Doc. Thank you for everything. Uh, revive us. Absolutely. Uh, more streams part. Yeah. <laughs> Negotiable. <laughs> Negotiable. All right. All right. <laughs> uh, and Blazing Banshee with the 27 months. Uh, Khaled, thank you for the three. Hang come. What up, Hayne? How are you? 26 months. Musical Beats with the two. Uh, Blark with the 17. Niffler with the tier three. Wait, wait, did you just say, did you just say liar? And then you said, Hey, I'm new here. Excuse me. You cannot play that game with me over here. You cannot say liar and then say, hi, I'm new with a 26 tier three resub. Thank you, Niffler. Appreciate that. <laughs> OT7 heartbeat. <clears throat> what's going on? How are you? Uh, thank you for the 20 months prime gin and pain. What's going on, Jen? How are you? 18. Uh, I do believe there was a bunch of the gifted which i can't see that part any any azma uh thank you for the eight months shin and she what's going on thank you for 33 uh niffler with the five gifted and then shara with the 21 thank you for the five gifted niffler appreciate that and shara welcome back how are you i think that catches us up uh, it takes us to a nice little level four. <laughs> Definitely with a true OG. True. Real. Uh, anyway. Uh, yeah. Bailey stream. Let's see how crazy this one gets. Do, 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 do. Let's see how this one goes. <laughs> I wish they would actually fix our thing so that we could sit in this properly. <clears throat> I think I have to do four on this one. There we go. I can't do the other one. It doesn't like actually fit. Why the hell is there a dog in the core house? It better be like an emotional support dog. All I'm going to say. Is that Charles? Charles! Hmm. It's better. Thank you for another gifted sub. Thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> uh, so, what's been happening? Uh, it has been a while. Uh, 
Let's see what time do we got. Doc quiz wave, doc quiz wave, doc quiz wave, doc quiz wave. Uh, see, announce, do, 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 clear announcement. Uh, anyway, so, yeah. Uh, I have tried so hard to get TJ a warrant. I have. At this point, it just feels like it's forcing it. <laughs> Yo, Spanner! This is a casual 10 bomb, okay? Just casually dropping a tenner. Just, all right, here's 10. Yep, we, here we go. Just casual 10. This is a, a casual, nice. Not, you know, <sighs> hearts up in chat. Thank you once again for 10 gifted subs. I appreciate that. Uh, and also Angel's Kiss. What if they don't Thank you for the four kiss. months. Appreciate that. Thank you as well. Start up in the fall. Uh, <clears throat> that Leon Law. <laughs> Yeah, we've tried hard. Uh, we have absolutely tried our hardest. And it's uh, it's a little bit of a disappointment to see that we can't get one. Um, kind of, kind of... I don't know if it's the... <laughs> Uh, I, I don't know. I, I have a lot of opinions on a lot of things right now. And, uh, man. I don't know what the combination is, but uh, just give him the fucking warrant at this point. Please. Get caught? I mean, that's the easy thing is getting caught. All these things should be, like, pretty automatic. Okay, all right, just casual tier five over here. This is a casual tier five. Uh, Lalo, thank you for the 12-month Prime subscription. Spanner, thank you for another gifted sub. Actually, two more gifted subs. Thank you for that. Uh, up to 81. What's going on, Loki Panachan? How are you? Okay. So, <clears throat> these, uh, these judges, I don't know who the one on the far right is. I think that's Leon Law, Stout, and Adams. I don't think I've really interacted with her too much. Uh, <laughs> speaking of state attorney's office, uh, yes, yeah, apparently Samantha Sanders wants TJ to, uh, yeah. <laughs> Once uh, uh, a little domination <laughs> from TJ, uh, which was kind of an interesting development to get last night. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, there's a text message chain of <laughs> something like, hey, here's my number. Uh, I'm not sure you're going to keep this in private. Don't think you're probably going to keep it in private, but not sure this is going to go anywhere anyway. Just in case you need my number, here you go. And then TJ gets a call from Faye saying, yeah, uh, I heard it directly from like one of her friends that... Yes, hello there. Where the hell's Bailey? Oh, there he is. Okay. I'm right here. Well, hello to you. I wasn't saying hello to you, but hello to you as well. Didn't see you, if I'm being honest. You weren't saying hello, but hello. Does that make sense there? Yes, it does. I wasn't saying hello to you, but now I am. Oh, well then, thank you. I could lie and say that I was meaning that for you. Eh, hey, just be like all the other PD anyway. Yep. <laughs> uh, Spear, thank you for the gift of sub to cast it. I appreciate that. Uh, so yeah, that was a little interesting development. 
Not sure how I want to play that. That could be an interesting card, given the time. Uh, <laughs> that could be a very interesting card. <sighs> the typical TJ pose would be pretty funny as a judge, though. Wait, what? <laughs> What's going on, Bargy? I can't sit in this chair properly. Like, it doesn't actually work. Um, yeah, so what have we done? I think I've listed it out to you all a few times at some point, probably in character. Um, we have RPG does Valdo in front of DOC. We have beat down Carmine. Every single day, I have carried some illegal item on me that if I ever got searched during like a traffic stop, during just a random thing, which I would have to comply to, um, he would be breaking parole. Um, the whole even twatting out shit, like on top of this, right? All these things, um, I have purposely tried to say, okay, if you're going to do a parole program, make it work. So, uh, TLDR, my summary is... I'm sorry, but parole program should not be a thing if that's how they're treated. That's it. If it's a way that you want to get people out there, that's fine. But uh, I don't think a parole program is actually fit for the server if people are going to just take it as a way that they don't want to do anything with it. Uh, if you really want to play hooky with your parole, we can just have Shang drive. You just had Shang drive my last job and you almost got me cat. <laughs> it's fair. Thank you for three more gifted subs. Appreciate that. How many of y'all do we actually have here? We're doing amazing. Uh, six so far. Six of y'all. Excluding you, six including you. Huh. I guess the most amount of judges I've ever seen in one courtroom at any given time. There was a bunch of them Same. last night too. Absolutely. What the hell was that one for? I've been uh, a drug trafficking, on and the defendants so didn't, didn't even show up. Yeah, they didn't even show. Who was that? I don't know. Uh, Chuko Sr. and John Collins. It was my case. I, you know, punished them to the fullest extent of the law because the evidence was there. Mm. And they didn't even bother to respond. Well, of course. So what the hell are you doing with a baseball cap on? Especially of a alcoholic beverage. There's professionalism, and then there's going out to the ball game and drinking there. Which one yeah. are you doing right now? Is that your thing? Yeah, it's my thing. I mean, to be fair, a bunch of judges used to wear the, you know, the, the stupid cowboy hat. So what's the difference? Hey, one's encouraging alcohol. The other one's actually classy. Though I hated the cowboy hat. It's not classy. I'd rather wear a... Uh, I'd rather wear a baseball hat than a, a cowboy hat any day. Well, thank God you're not wearing either one of them. Yeah. Well, I Titus wouldn't wear it. I got all oh, my yeah, hair. Titus. I don't need to. Titus does. Ah, yeah. Titus does, yeah. Mm. Well, Titus is uh, you know, maybe if you wore a cowboy hat once, you might have won an actual court case there, Mr. Callow. I did win a bunch of court cases. Are we counting on one hand or two hands? I'll show you, <laughs> I'll show you two hands in a second. You keep talking like that, Bailey. Oh, my God. <laughs> Is there a criminal threat there, Callum? <laughs> it's it's on justice them, yeah. violence. Take Yo, this outside. Yo, sincere, I came to, to tell you that you're a threat. bitch, but I'm still here. This is why we can't have more than two of us in a room at the same time. Uh huh. <laughs> I, I just need. I'm just trying to make some money. Are you going to TwitchCon, buddy? Open out. <sighs> Hello there. Hello, sir. Honorable Judge Bailey. Yes. I'll be your head, uh, 
head bailiff for the day. Are there any certain like rules that you would like enforced inside your courtroom? Do you know how to swear people in? Uh, that I do, sir. That I do. All right. First off, no masks. No masks. No hats. No hats. Acting right. up, making stupid threats, saying they're going to do something, you say it immediately. All right. I don't put up for bullshit in my courtroom. All right. Should we make them ride the lightning? Well, you give them the warning, and then if they fail to comply, get them the hell out of here. All right. Sounds good. I won't go straight to that part. Okay. That's a little more lenient. Understood. Uh huh. No yeah. I felt like I, I couldn't do Twitch comments here. Vegas? Uh uh. Sorry for swearing in your room, sir. Hey, Isaac. Yeah, a minimum there. All right. All right, hey. Hello there. You don't hear me. I'll rise for the Honorable Judge Bailey. Oh, I'm already here. What the hell? You don't have to do it. Never mind. Hello, Your Honor. Yes, hi. Uh, Murphy, you actually have a, a license anymore? Uh, yes, Your Honor. What number is this one? Um, I, I, I don't think it's written on the card. Oh, all right. Fair enough. Jason Waves, he's, uh, he's at his peak for this card, and he's about to... He'll probably lose it in a month or so. Hell, maybe even the middle of this case. Maybe. Y'all have everyone you need on your side, prosecution? Still already, Your Honor. And the fence? Uh, we're going to, uh... We're going to make a, uh... Hail Mary here. Uh, we would like to motion to add a surprise witness. Objection. Of course. Would you like to expand upon that? Uh, yes, Your Honor. The discovery closed 48 hours ago. Murphy is a very well-trained counselor. He understands the how common jurisprudence and stare decisis works. He should be aware to enter the witness in before the close of discovery. Furthermore, it does not give the people enough time to understand where the witness is coming from or adjust our trial strategy uh, concerning that witness being called. If that is the fact, then we'd like to motion for continuance for, for three weeks. Yeah, I don't think the continuance part's gonna happen. Frankly, I don't particularly see this lasting until uh, sometime in November. So I will go ahead and deny your surprise witness. You do to have ample time to do so. All right. Um, fair enough, Your Honor. Uh, in that case, uh, I will, uh, as a pretrial motion, also motion to uh, strike uh, if we refer to the police report the uh text records and phone call uh records not the geopositional records just the text and phone call records cited in that report uh the prosecution never admitted the uh the complete uh subpoenaed phone records into discovery so we have no context or basis aside from their curated list of uh communication do you have the original copy of the entirety of the subpoena then? Hey, your honor, sorry to interrupt, yes. but can you tell the peanut gallery to shut the fuck up? I can't hear shit. Which one? The ones behind you, the uh, DOC, yes. or which one? Hey! Is everybody back there? Y'all back there! Your honor, we're conducting hey, uh, business. I don't give a shit. Conduct your business as you're supposed to be conducting your business. Shut the hell up back there, because there's actual things being said. You're good. And also take your helmet off. Yeah, take the helmet off. I'm, I'm negotiating with Bobby. One second here. There's no damn negotiation. Take it off. My order, not Bobby's order. All right. Do I have a copy of the entirety of the subpoena is what was signed for originally there, Murphy? Uh, no, we do not possess uh, such a uh, document, nor was it entered into discovery. Well, it should have been, uh, uh go ahead. Uh, Your Honor, all three of the subpoenas were in by the defense uh, for the for the defenses A, B, and C for the subpoenas. The, uh, the, the subpoenas which were assigned the request for those records, not the uh, actual communications. Ah, we have the actual copy of the subpoena that was submitted to Mr. Lang and Miss Eve, yes? Yes, Your Honor. All right. And then is there subsequent documents supporting the entirety of the subpoena. I 
Is that a yes or no? Wait, hold on. Are you asking like, let me, let me be real. Uh, I want you to be like, honest asking, and tell me no, 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 actually I'm what I'm asking. What you're saying, your Honor, I'm sorry. I'm trying to understand what you're saying. Are you asking for the raw like data like that was given to us from those subpoenas? Yes. Uh, it is not in evidence, no, but the data from those raw subpoenas is written into evidence, if that makes sense. So, like, the actual raw data is not, but the data from those are in the evidence in the protocol of the report, yes. Murphy, did you have a full copy of that subpoena? I have the, uh, the signed subpoena uh, authorizing the pulling of those records. And I have the police report with the uh, communications pulled out of context. But in terms of the raw data, which was reviewed to provide that uh, and to support that, uh, we have not received that and uh, you have not received that. Why don't you motion to compel, Murphy? Well, um, you know, as a defense attorney, it's not necessarily uh, serve my interest to remind the prosecution to prosecute if it's giving context to your defendants over there mr buddha and mr eve it might be in their best interest for them to actually have the documents produced which you motion then well if you're asking for things to be stricken there are ways and avenues for that information to become available to you okay well Using the same arguments that uh, the prosecution so very eloquently used to uh, deny my last minute witness, I would argue the same against the prosecution. Why should they get favors for not doing their job? Big facts. You're not, we won't be using any like evidence that's not submitted today, so. <clears throat> Frankly, Murphy, I'm kind of at a loss with that one because you're saying for them not doing their job, but I'm putting this back on you for compelling to actually for them to produce it. So technically, it's your onus to do your job as well. To ask to ask them for a potentially incriminating evidence. What is an appeal, Your Honor, for five hundred? <laughs> Thank you. Ah, right. anyway. Uh, the evidence will stand is submitted. You have your opportunity to uh, get that further evidence if you would have liked. We will proceed. Understood? Thank you, Your Honor. Mm hmm. Now, do we have everyone in here that needs to be here? Yes, people Your Honor. Are, but people are ready to proceed, Your Honor. Alrighty. Let's go ahead and get this started then. Uh, give me one second. Alrighty. Today we are here for an appeal. Mr. Lang Buddha and Eve Summers in regards to report number 91091. Here's a statement of claim on August 28th, 2023. Crystal Clear was found wounded on the shoreline near the Sonora Way power plant on August 20, uh, 31st. 2023, Miss Eve Summers was arrested and charged for alleged involvement in this incident, along with Mr. Buddha, Luciano DiCenzo, and Aria Baker. Mr. Buddha and Miss Summers have both pleaded not guilty to all charges associated with these convictions and hereby invoke their due process rights as citizens to have their day in court. Due to the volume and nature of the unique and unprecedented and high level policy interactions woven into the material fiber, <clears throat> fabric of these proceedings, the defense must emphatically recommend this matter be attended to directly by Chief Justice or by representatives from within the Senate. Sorry, you get just justice, not Chief, on this one. All righty. <clears throat> Let's see. Charges are as follows. Both individuals. I'll read these out. And I need to know which ones y'all contested. I'm guessing all of these, but we'll do it one by one. Uh, Mr. Buddha and Miss Summers. Kidnapping of a government employee times one. Are you contesting this? Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Buddha? You, you answer. You, you two answer. I'll contest everything, Your Honor. You're contesting everything. Attempted murder of a government employee times one. Yeah. 
Is that must... Ah, conspiracy times one. Yes. And act of torture. Yes. Alrighty. Just, just to clarify, yes, she is contesting, not yes. Yes, I understood. I can't read between the lines there. On a, just a correct, can I, can I correct those charges just because some of them are like, okay. conflict the, or the, not matter? Right, yeah, the charges aren't being corrected. For some reason, when things get imported, they're not listed as accomplice or accessory, so we just want to make sure that that is utterly clear since some of that doesn't show up on public records. Could you give me the actual ones, please? Yeah, yes, uh... Do better. What's happening right now? I'm very confused. So no, no, there's just, uh, a a hold on. I have it, Miss Paul. Give me a second. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Just let me speak. Thank you. So there's a, a primary person that typically does this. That's you know, for example, if you go ahead and you actually pull the trigger, that's the primary person. If someone helps you with it, they're there. That's the accomplice. They're just making sure which one is accomplice, which Why one is. The goalpost is being moved right now, though. Uh, frankly, it's not. It's just a clarification that they're putting with it. These were listed by your, hold on. These were listed by actually your lawyer, but Mr. Braun. Okay. So this is a clarification from their perspective, which actually can help your case. Right, 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 right. Help my case. It's because right. your appeal is uh, joined to the other one like this. Uh, yes. They had to make that clarification. Yeah. Um. Okay, so just to clarify, for Langbutter, the charges are... Uh, as the one stated, so they are the kidnap of a government employee, attempted murder of a government employee, act of torture and conspiracy. But for Mr. E. Summers, it is uh, accomplice to a, a kidnapping of a government employee, accomplice to attempted murder of a government employee, and conspiracy and act of torture. So just to make that clear. So just the first two ways accomplices. Yes, Your Honor. All right. Okay. Y'all have an uh, opening statement there? The people are ready to proceed, Your Honor. Fans? Uh, yes, Your Honor. Alrighty. Let's go ahead and get it going there. Thank you. Mm hmm. Multiple gashes to the back of the head. Decompressed and fracture. Look like it came from blunt force trauma. Dumped in water. Water and lungs and pneumonia. High blood. Uh, unit loss. Pupils were dilated. Possible concussion. Admitted to the admitted to the ICU. These are the injuries reported by Dr. Alexander Bones when he examined the condition of Miss Crystal Clear following her brutal assault. Threatened with her life, the destruction of her most pri uh, the near destruction of her most prized possession, Miss Clear was led to the ocean and beaten to near death. Miss Eve Summers and Mr. Lang Buddha sit at the defendant's table, ready to spin a tale of coincidence. But, Your Honor, there is no coincidences here. Facts don't lie, and the facts here, as presented, will be clear to the court. Your Honor, the people hope that, once again, the sword of justice can be swung for the defense and be accosted as justice so rightly does time and time again. Thank you. Uh, Your Honor, so you're in the court today. Uh, ladies and gentlemen uh, assembled before us, uh, this is a very uh, straightforward case. The, uh, the the foundational cornerstone of our entire justice system is the obligation that the people have to prove their case and their charges beyond a reasonable doubt. And we will demonstrate today, fairly straightforwardly, that uh, there is plenty of reasonable doubt in this case and uh whether it is spun as a coincidence as the prosecution so eloquently phrased uh or whether it is spun as an incomplete story with a lot of missing facts uh the fact remains that uh the burden of proof will not be met by the end of this court case today and uh we will we will see that definitively uh, as it unfolds. Thank you. <clears throat> Alrighty. Prosecution, y'all have witnesses lined up? No, sir. We did not call any witnesses. You don't have nothing to do with that. Alright. Move to the fence, then. 
Actually, before that, would you like to point out any evidence? Yes, Your Honor. All right, could you go ahead and proceed with that? Uh, yes, Your Honor. Specifically, uh, in the report 91091, one of the uh, bottom pieces of evidence, uh, you'll see where uh, numerous sets of cell phone triangulation align with the location of Miss Clear's, uh, where, where, she, where her uh, body was found. Ah, they assume, hold on, before you keep going with this, assume I'm yes. a dummy and know nothing about cell phone triangulation. <laughs> Teach yes, me through sir. this because I have no idea what the hell any of this means. But your honor, you're so smart. Excuse me there? Yeah. I was saying you're so smart. I, I figured we we figured you knew, Your Honor. But we'll. Uh... Okay, I will uh, talk to it, Your Honor. Um, when we receive uh, cell phone data, we get locations, and it creates a triangle. Um, those locations are then put through our detectives to produce these images that you see uh, in the report. Um, I personally uh, made the bottom two, but they were made with the location data uh, taken from the scanners. So the bottom two, for example, uh, the top one that is titled uh, Location Data Compare 2023-08-28-2010-2011. And that shows the three locations of Lang, Butter, Crystal Clear, and Eve Summers. Uh, they were basically within those sections. And that orange dot that is on that is Crystal Clear's storefront, which is called Crystal's Crystals. Which is in public record, Your Honor. It's also pictured in the evidence above, titled "Location Compare: Colon Eve Summers versus Crystal uh, Crystals Crystals, 2023-08-28-20-11-00." Uh, colon colon zero zero, showing an exact location of Crystals Crystals. Um, the piece of evidence I would like to point to is the one just below that, which is the location data compare uh, at uh, 2039 hours. Um, and that shows the location where we recovered uh, Crystal Clear's body, uh, as long with Langbutter's and Luciana DiCenzo's uh, cell phone tracking data at, this, at the time. If you'd like the exact times that those were done, that is what it is in the title of uh, like the report. Like that is the title of like the piece of evidence. That is like the time that those locations were. Yes, I understand um, that. I'm looking at triangles. I don't know how all, all these things in a way. Uh, Keep in mind, so, once again, so I'm old. Cell phone data means nothing to me. You're okay. Yes, sir. So those those triangles uh, would basically state that Lang Buddha was within that triangle location or whoever who had, who had their cell phone. So that that cell phone uh, belonging to Lang Buddha uh, would have been in that location at that time. If I may put it in uh, the simplest terms for the entirety of the court, Your Honor, uh, whenever you launch your phone to play. Uh, Clash of Bejeweled Battles. Uh, the government watches you, and we can triangulate. Keyword triang, triangle. Get it, Your Honor. Uh, so whenever you are using your phone, it pings different cell phone towers, and this evidence points that whoever's name is tied to this triangle. So, for instance, the first piece of evidence that uh, Corporal Pawn brought up. The Langbuda Crystal Clear Eve Summers that are all color coded. Eve Summers is somewhere in that triangle. Langbuda is in his orange triangle. Crystal Clear is in her yellow triangle. Uh, Eve Summers is his blue. I didn't say her color. Uh, and these, as pictured in evidence, are all overlapping. In the simplest terms, Your Honor. I can clarify even further if you'd like. Uh, yes, I would like to understand. Are we in math class or a fucking court case? I'm very confused. To right put now. it very simply, in the one with the Lang Buddha, Crystal Clear, and Eve Summers, Lang Buddha and Crystal Clear were at the exact same location at the exact same time. That is why the triangles overlap. You might need to go back to criminal school, Mr. Buddha. Mr. Boom, Bloom. No offhanded comments, please. Uh, this evidence basically links in with my giant statement, or, well, statements from my statement. It is the uh, debrief of the report, which is there above. Sorry that I write a lot, Your Honor. Um, what I'm saying here is you have all this information. For someone that has not been involved with this whatsoever, the first thing that y'all do to me is point me towards triangles. 
and say these were the people this is what happened there are charges here that have been brought forth you have information that i'm assuming has some pointing towards uh kidnapping attempted murder and act of torture and conspiracy at this point you've pointed me towards triangles and expect me to make something out of that uh, yes. no you're not i'm 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 getting to the, the point of like where else is going we're just highlighting this so you can then understand it with a visual to then get to the word part if that makes sense this is our visual aid, Your Honor. <sighs> Alrighty. Uh, uh, yes, Your Honor. So if we're looking at the, uh, the first image that we mentioned, uh, which is the second to last image in 91091 as a visual aid. Hold on, can uh, I put this up here so I can actually understand if this is the right one or not? Yeah. Yes, yes sir. Please, I encourage you to do so. Uh, 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 uh. There's one. That's the one. Yes, Your Honor. For those of you who are not looking, go ahead and point your attention to the uh, projector project screen over there. Uh, so in this image, uh, between uh, 2000 and 21, or 2021, uh, based on the timeline and text presented, uh, Mr. Lang Buddha, Miss Eve Summers, and Miss Crystal Clear, the victim of this, this particular case, were found within this area. If we look at the specific text messages, uh, we find one from Arya ba uh, Bakker texting Eve Summers, which is one of the reasons why this particular cell phone, or these three towers were pinged for Eve Summers, stating, alone. Uh, later, at 2013, we have Ling Buddha texting Eve Summers to lock the office and watch outside. 2017, uh, 20, uh, sorry, yeah, 2017, uh, Ling Buddha texts Eve Summers to unlock. All of those particular text messages ping off of the areas within these towers. And uh, again, this is where in public record Crystal Clear's store happened to be from at the orange dot. Um, we'll move on to the second image, which is the last image in that report. <clears throat> Bear with me. Yeah, this is like, uh, hmm. going back and forth in between like reports and images while trying to take notes. I need like, honest to God, a court stenographer. Alrighty, is that what you're referring to there? Yes, your honor. All right, go ahead. Uh, so this would be in relation to uh, right prior. So this would be 2040 to 2055. Uh, down in the UTC timeline. Uh, this is when uh, the uh, abduction area, the last the last location where Crystal Clear ended up being picked up. Uh, right around this time is when uh, one of the accomplices, Luciano DiCenzo, uh, his cell phone towers ended up being pinged, as well as when uh, uh, Mr. Buddha uh, made a phone call and sent text messages. Uh, that's where his cell phone was pinged, was on top of the area where Miss Clear's body was found. Yeah, I think, yeah. Alrighty, is that it? No. Alright, well, uh, this is where I keep going. Just one moment, Yonder. To clarify the more information that you were seeking, Your Honor, to make sense of these triangles, the first uh, image you put up on the projector and the first one that the prosecution pointed to, uh, I won't read the loud, obnoxious title that we have with the time sense and everything. We all know the overlapping three triangles. That is the initial point of contact that Eve Summers made with Crystal Clear storefront as, uh, as in the uh, police report. This is also the location that Buddha, Lang Buddha, made a purchase 
and ab uh, abducted Crystal Clear with the help of Eve Summers, who used her position at a construction company to lock her inside like some sick animal in a cage. This is where the kidnapping of her government employee took place. The second bit, Your Honor, the second photo, the second piece of evidence, that is where the act of torture and the attempted murder took place, Your Honor. The phone records and communication between the defendants is the conspiracy. All laid out in the police report, all perfectly clear in evidence. I hope that painted a clear picture of why we are bringing colorful triangles into the courtroom today, Your Honor. Uh, I have one final image, Your Honor. Uh, it is the report linked from Luciano DeCenjo's uh, subpoena. So the report underneath that subpoena, 90872, a transaction log. That transaction log lists Lane Gooda making a purchase from Crystal Clear store. Do we have what it was uh, being purchased from the store? Do we have any idea of that? Uh, no, sir. It just lists uh, purchase from store at $50. Alrighty. The people... I also would just like to highlight the entire uh, debrief on the 91091 report uh, it details everything from start to finish so it is long and i'm not going to read it out for this entire court i just would like you to make be very well aware of it and it is very detailed with a lot of inf information that breaks this all down <clears throat> uh yeah i mean i think that's everything hmm. Uh, the people rest your honor. Cooley jailing. Doc quiz judge. Hope you are well, Doc. Doc quiz. All righty. Murphy. All right. Um, you get a two minute recess. Indeed, you may. All right. Perfect. Orders in recess, two minutes. How the fuck are the 49ers losing? Isn't it the Browns? Yeah, they're playing the fucking yeah. Browns. They're playing the fucking Browns. Uh, also, uh... Your Honor, do you want that guy's head off? No, I've already schooled him for it. It's fine. Okay. I don't Just agree with it. I don't like it. You can haze him a little bit. Hey, Lee. He is a newbie. I can leave that to you, my friend. I don't. I'm also not a fan of the candy cigarette he's got going on. What? You guys talking about me? No, clearly not. No, the yeah. other guy with a hat and a cigarette in his mouth that's right next to us. Make up, Leon. Oh, how old are you? you are so lucky somebody loves you too. Me? Yes, I'm speaking with you, yes. 27? 27. Yep. The entirety of your life in front of you. And this yep. is what you chose to become. Yes. Alrighty. Well, I want to see what you have in you. Mr. 27-year-old hat-wearing candy cigarette smoking. It's a candy cigarette, for sure. Uh huh. Kind of looks like a guy that would have like a lollipop in his hand. You prepared, Murphy? The, the little hats that have a uh, little helicopter thing on the top? Uh, yeah. No. I don't know if the entire gang is making its way to the, uh, to the press. All right. Uh, well, Your Honor, uh, we've not, uh, added any witnesses and, uh, my defendants are going to uh, remain silent. What you getting at here, Murphy? What am I getting at? Of course. I'm sorry? How's this over here? 
Uh, I don't know, some what? chatter, Your Honor. Your Honor, it's just like the defendants. Their crew thinks they are not bound by the law, so they're going near the press where only government employees and press are allowed. It's disgusting. Hey, I'm going to need you all back behind there, please, and thank you. What's even worse is that no one stopped them. Hey, people in defense over there. The judge is telling you to move if you're not a government employee. I want to listen. Mr. DOC guards over there, please take care of this. I'll take care of it, Your Honor. That's up to the judge if you're considered part of press. Uh, Sorry. Go ahead and go. No need to apologize. First, that's okay. Thank you. Ooh, headband yeah. thinks he's exempt. You know? <sighs> All righty. All's back in the session. You good, Murphy? Uh, yeah, yes, Your Honor. You had a question for me? No, you're said, fine. Uh, All right. Oh, okay. Go you. ahead. Uh, well, uh, we're, uh, we don't have any witnesses, and, uh, my clients, the defendants, are going to, uh, not take the stand today. <coughs> That's it. That's all you got? Um... Yeah, I'll, I'll examine uh, and counter their examination of evidence. Uh, I'll wrap that into my closing. That'll be that'll be fine. Do you have nothing you'd like to point out? Uh, I mean, I can just I can just I usually do it in my closing, Your Honor. Oh Lord! All righty. Well, say the magic word for me then. Uh, the fence rests, Your Honor. Oh, thank you. Okay, then. That brings us to closing. Y'all ready? Uh, the people will need approximately 10 minutes to double check and prepare, Your Honor. All righty. Look at some recess. 10 minutes. You have it. Go ahead. Thank you, Your Honor. The hell? <laughs> Bruh. <laughs> there. <laughs> What is this? What what is happening? Fuck. Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Do they not want to counter anything? Do they not want to point anything out? Do they not? <sighs> you're trying to tell me is that you filmed a documentary where you admit to murdering a bunch of people uh, 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 and you're admitting this in a court of law bro i'm like i'm months to prepare this. he's already admitted it i'm at a loss judge. right now all the closing statements and everything he says he's a dumbass i was using my outdoor voice so you could hear that <sighs> how could tj do this Fuck. Yeah, he's yeah, admitted it. It's been please. brought to Han Belsing. Was, uh, was Crystal Clear admitted as a witness to this? It doesn't seem like it. No, I don't think so. <laughs> I said she had, like, um, I'm guessing maybe that she had, like, severe head trauma or whatever. If this is what they expect me to do and go back and read through every report like this, holy shit. There's not that much. I, I, read, yeah, I, read, I, read, I read through all of it. I haven't read any of it yet. Yeah, it's, mm. it, it's not what I was expecting. There's no statement from Crystal on there either. Is uh, there uh, there's a medical record, yes? What? No. No what? medical record. No. All right, so. There's... Well, seems like I have a little reading to do when I get back there. Yeah, it's not too bad. The only thing I've seen right now are triangles everywhere. Well, I mean, they, they are... They are pretty crazy, but yeah, you know, there's charges here, and what what is crazy and charges having to do with it? Well, elaborate I mean, they, on that. They just well because they they sure they might have the triangles are pretty strong circumstantial. Yeah, they're pretty strong. They're they're actually pretty pointful, but you know, there's no nothing else, no medical record. Oh, nothing. You know, I don't know where this is going, but I feel like this would have been a good idea. This would have been a good case for, like, I don't know, the state attorney 
to, to get one of the offices involved in this up there to, you know, kind of ask questions and to paint a narrative. And that's oh, exactly what I see is triangles, as you said, circumstantial. Yeah. Well, it's Before very. Judge, I can it's, I can explain it to you. It's pretty strong. It's it's actually pretty uh, it's, wild yeah. how it's strong, how crazy it is. If you These guys are the, not uh, very smart. Is, honestly, if you I, include I the, the evidence from the text messages plus the. Wait, ooh, that's what I will end up doing. It's pretty. Uh, I don't know stuff. Oh, you seem to know enough. <clears throat> I wonder who the surprise witness was. You should have asked who it was before you denied it. Just in yeah. case. No, I actually have very strong feelings if you want to add something as a gotcha moment, because frankly, there's time to prepare for things, and that leaves the prosecution with no time to prepare for the witness that will be answered at that point. Well, it depends. It could have been like Luciano. Uh, and honestly, if they asked Luciano, you should. I would 100% said yes because that's not uh that's not really prejudicial because uh, they they wrote about him in the case they're pretty prepared for it. Well, yeah, but they also wouldn't have had time to prepare to question him for the trial regardless. Correct. Maybe. Mm -hmm. Well, if generally, I was, I think generally both sides would need to agree to. Yeah. Well, I'm saying if I was on their side, the cop side, and they wanted to call Luciano, I would have 100% said. Some mass off in the courtroom, please. Yes, please. Sir. Or at least they could question somebody and push something because there's just they didn't question anybody there's no nothing there's no way to thank you, know, you. something i mean nobody i mean i guess the, the two main people don't want to be questioned right and then Hats off in the courtroom please no they don't yeah i guess I considering the this crystal thing i mean yeah. unless they just really were giving them the benefit of knowing what they were doing i'm guessing crystal Whoa. since it said she suffered a lot of Head injuries they might just not remember anything, but they probably should have still included the medical report and stuff. Yeah, well, at least have the, the, expert least have the officer that the, found uh, her. GPS location and having them run down the GPS location. Dad, by the way, I'm not taking like any of the, these guys are saying right now. There's like too much into it. Yeah, uh, by the, the way. That found her so Bailey's still going to be partial to Bailey and what his thoughts are. Huh. If they bring up like procedural things, then yeah, I'll I'm go on the procedural things, but it's not my prerogative to kind of start doing that stuff. A narrative would have been uh, really nice. Let me Hopefully, get back to a few of these seconds. Spanner, maybe? you're up to 100 gifted subs within like a day. Check, we get some hearts up in chat for Spanner with 100 gifted that subs. A Literally, in like a day. Let me see some hearts, please. Uh, lots of them. By the and way, then, I started a timer on my phone, so I got the. Thing when it pops up all right well, tell me what's 10 minutes later we got four minutes yeah we got four minutes hey, well, right. thank you hey you found the uh, uh you found the stop button since when we did this last night right you didn't get the news button yeah okay. it's pretty cool thank you the 15 months the thing where it says <clears throat> miss penguino great work Callum. great work thank you for the new so tier one sub blazing uh, banshee for the 27 and the thank you all for just the touch, follows if you're new to the channel it. and first time here go ahead hit the follow button for me please Please don't lock up your streamers. No, it's not locking up the streamers. They already had it. It's basically getting the charges removed at this point. Um, they've already been to prison. <laughs> they served the time. They have it on their record. So it's not locking them up. Ah, <laughs> please do. <laughs> Excuse me. Please stop shouting! I'm trying to do things. Stop it. Listen. Take it everybody here. We all know that y'all want to make it about yourselves for a hot minute. Shut the hell up and let them do the damn jobs. All right? I ain't trying to play around with this. Oh my god, now we have a cheat. This is the, this is the ultimate this judge stack. This is the true stack. judge stack, yes. This is the... That, that's a lot of people here. <laughs> okay. 
<laughs> How many judges in a courtroom? Look at this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And uh, is there one of them not signed on? <clears throat> okay. Uh, let's see. Closing statements. Ah, uh, boy. <laughs> Everyone's hoping for spice. I was hoping for some spice. I wanted some spice over here. I want some spice. Uh, kind of which one of the judges would be available for bench trial. It also depends on the prosecuting, uh, at this point, officers, the original officers, arresting officers, AOs, whatever you call it, uh, if they're available or not to make that happen. Uh, anything that's like a warrant or related to a warrant has to be, all parties need to be involved or around for it. Yo, Sin, thank you for the two months. Appreciate that. Uh, how do I feel about it? Uh how i'll listen to the closing statements <laughs> um so <clears throat> i'll put it out there as well um so as stated that was part of it is that they were hoping that the chief justice or someone from the senate could take it um i did get an email from nathan or crane whatever you want to put it he's like hey can you take this i was like uh sure so <sighs> um you know, having heard snippets on TJ, I was like, dude, I can do this impartially. Like, I have no problem yeah, doing it, but, time. you know, uh, I still want to Not come yet. back and, like, be some sort of, like, thought because I'm involved with TJ. That there's a bias here. Uh, I, I'm doing this completely unbiased. All the information I have... Uh, obviously from an OOC perspective, I'm not using anything that I have. This is all from Bailey's side to it, so all this all shit right. is, uh, right, is just straight to Bailey, so... It's part of like, how do you defeat bias within it? I mean, you got to do with what you're presented. Uh, so I'm, I took this uh, as someone was asked for me to do. So that's why I'm doing this. Did you say the honorable grace and Bailey? I did not. I said Bailey. We all heard grace. Bailey. All righty. Everyone. Your 10 minutes is up. Call us quote back in the session. Let's go. Thank you, Your Honor. As everyone's aware, uh, those who within the legal uh, field or not to present a case, whether it is an appeal where the burden of proof is shifted, whether it is a simple civil case, everything comes through telling a story. And today, Your Honor, I plan on outlining everything extremely clearly. As listed in the report, uh, the primary report, uh, we have uh, an officer, Neil McReel, stating that he observed uh, Lang Buddha uh, being near MRPD with a very fast car, an S-plus car. If we look at uh, the points in his uh, triangulation uh, when it comes to where his cell phone tower picked up uh, later uh, between the power plant past uh, 2038 in the timeline, we see where he enters back into the city in the... In, basically mock speed very few cars could reach that speed but i will start from the beginning didn't you just start from the beginning already oh boy we see in the purchase uh as outlined in my statement of evidence at 2003 where ling buddha purchased an item from crystal clear store Later, uh, Ling Buddha receives a call, uh, sorry, calls Eve Summers and they talk for about a minute. Very shortly after, Eve Summers' uh, daughter, Arya Bakker, receive, uh, reaches out to Crystal Clear. Fortunately, Crystal Clear reached out to Sergeant Bloom, and if we look at the timeline at 2010, notating that she was at her store, which is one of the points of evidence that we had in our uh, statement of claim, or statement of evidence at the end of our presentation. Sorry. 
She was saying anything else there? <sighs> Air with us for a moment there. It happens. We do have generators. If I'm stabbed in the neck, it was Eve Summers. Let the generators kick on back on. There you go. Go ahead, continue. Thank you, Honor. As mentioned in our statement of evidence, we receive uh, notions and cell phone triangulation of uh, two of the defendants, or the only defendants here, plus the victim, uh, where Lang Buddha notes to uh, Miss Summers stating to unlock. As listed in uh, public records, uh, Miss Summers works for a numerous set of companies, one of them being a construction agency, which most likely, if not exactly, has keys to ensure that that facility is unlocked unlawfully. Later in the evening, at 2017, uh, we can see where uh, Lang Buddha and Miss Clear's cell phone information appears right on top of each other. Later in the evening, at 2032, that same information uh, coincides. At that same exact time, one of their accomplices, uh, Luciano Dicenzo, calls Ling Buddha, uh, but there's no direct answer. Fortunately for Ms. Clear, uh, Corporal Pond did try to reach out to her at 2034, pinging her location. Just a couple minutes later, once again, Mr. Buddha's cell phone information overlaps with Ms. Clear's, pointing in the exact same location that her body was found. Shortly after, four minutes later, uh, Kyle Pred receives a call from Ling Buddha, as in his statement. Kyle Pred states that uh, he was on the Sanguine Isle uh, when Ling Buddha gave him a call. In that statement from Mr. Pred, uh, which is backed up uh, with the cell phone information from Mr. Buddha, Kyle Pred states that Ling Buddha told him that he was going to hurt Crystal that he was going to kill Crystal Clear and that Pred was never going to see her again. And there's nothing that Pred could do about it in a very vicious and taunting manner. Fortunately for Ms. Clear, all this information is recorded and all of this is fact. We, sorry, I'm, sorry, I'm having a little bit of an issue with my stomach, sorry. We are fortunate enough that all of, all of this information, all the scientific information is placed before us so that we can actually receive justice from Ms. Clear. The people hope that uh, the court is able to see how no defense is brought even to a singular appeal that the only information that is presented is even from the prosecution themselves. We defer to the court in the matters to ensure that uh, the defendant's appeal is denied. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, your honors, uh, ladies and gentlemen, courtroom today. We've seen a lot of triangles uh, today <laughs> in this case. And uh, triangles can be very important. <laughs> but what happens in those triangles <laughs> is even more important. <laughs> and finding out exactly what happened in those triangles. So just to clarify a couple of things which have been asserted for the record um i do not believe that it is actually possible as claimed by the prosecution to lock someone in their own property from the inside um, that is something which was claimed in their narrative of events which is simply not possible crystal clear would have had every ability to simply walk outside of her own building so uh if someone may or may not have been trying to keep someone out of the building is another argument altogether that was not made but i do want to clarify 
for that that most doors do open from the inside unless it is some sort of secure facility and uh since uh judge bailey has uh made it very clear that he is you know of advanced uh age and sensibilities and uh with the triangles and all i do want to point out that contrary to what the prosecution stated uh it does not pinpoint exactly where a bunch of people are it shows their general triangulated position so an approximation not an exact accounting an approximation so those are very very important details uh which were misstated that need to be cleared up now on to the heart of this case which can require us to circle back and talk about someone who was only just brought up which was Kyle Pred if uh if we refer to the evidence Kyle Pred is actually who started this uh entire investigation in statements which he made uh to Bloom uh which resulted in the uh, warrants and subpoenas and whatnot and uh, brought these charges against the defendants here. Now, um, curious to the defense is why Kyle Pred was not called to the stand to affirm his statements in sworn testimony. Um, and the defense uh, tends to believe that it is because Kyle Pred has absolutely no credibility as a human being he's a convicted treasonist who was by his own admission in the people's evidence engaged in an armed conflict with our country at the time he supposedly received this call from Mr. Buddha. Uh, Mr. Buddha who by the way uh, will have been a political opponent of Mr. Pred in this armed uprising he was actively engaged in by his own admission um, and the statements given to Bloom by Mr. Pred were of course given after uh, this insurrection failed and he was in prison for 30 years for treason. So we take a minute and think about Mr. Pred's situation. We can surmise that uh, it's a reduced set of circumstances to be in and someone with nothing to lose who has been convicted of betraying his entire country and shooting at officers, uh, that kind of person might be capable of just about anything. And given the level of reasonable doubt in this case, I think that it is equally, if not more likely, that Kyle Pred is somehow behind what happened to Crystal Clear, given that he is the only person involved in this case with a conviction history of kidnapping a government employee as well as the treason. And uh, whatever it means for my clients here today, it is going to need to be decided here by the court what uh, the credibility of a treasonist is in uh, statements and testimony compared to, say, a mentally ill person or uh, uh, someone who's been convicted of perjury. Because uh, as far as the defense can see, Kyle Pratt is someone who had the means, motive, an opportunity being hooked into a network of terrorists to carry out any kind of setup job he might want to against his political opponents. And that is all a matter of record. But Bloom, <laughs> you know, what are we going at at like this point? This is all. This is like a mirror, like smoke and mirrors deflection over here. It's like a guy of integrity, someone who's just looking to get justice for a fellow officer. But it is uh, the defense's opinion that Bloom, as a seasoned law enforcement officer, may have had some blinders on about who Kyle Pred was versus who Kyle Pred is today. Referencing a friendship and a kinship with Crystal Clear that would uh, tend to <laughs> indicate that his statements are truthful even after being convicted of lying and betraying everyone, especially fellow officers, former fellow officers. 
that he might have in the past had some kind of loyalty for. Um, regardless of how treason is treated in terms of credibility, Kyle Pred specifically is a person who has proven time and time again to have no credibility. And given the level of evidence that has been presented here and uh, having no accounting for whether the defendants, Mr. Buddha and Ms. Summers, were uh, attackers, victims, bystanders in any of these situations, showing a vague assortment of uh, communications pulled out of context that are nowhere near incriminating beyond a reasonable doubt, and all on the word of a traitor, of not even a, a, someone who was consider, considered a citizen of our country at the time he made these claims. The reasonable doubt is clear. Without a smoking gun, without a clear accounting of events that definitively points to Mr. Lang Buddha orchestrating a kidnapping, and especially at the bare minimum, without clear evidence that Eve Summers was wittingly engaged in this conspiracy. You cannot uphold this conviction based on some triangles, I'm sorry. Uh, it's, it's just, you just can't. You just, you just can't. I rest my case. <clears throat> Your Honor, I hate to do this, but I have two objections to his closing statement. Can you, I don't you usually you can do, do that, that while I it's can. actually happening, but yes, you can. Yeah, yes, sir. I was trying to respect the full closing statement. I'm not sure if you were a justice that would allow me to object during or if it was after, so I chose for after. Smells like some bullshit. Your Honor, I object to facts not in evidence and vouching when it comes to closing statements that were made concerning uh, Sergeant Bloom and Kyle Pred. None of that information is in any of the reports and in any images and any of the subpoenas. Nothing was presented by uh, for both people. Secondly, it's not up to counsel to vouch for their credibility. If you want to go check out for their, you know, their record or what's available in the public, that is for you to do so. It's not for counsel to point that out. Furthermore, the defense could have called Kyle Pred as a witness, as well as Ash Ketchup, both of which Murphy Braun failed his clients by not doing. Your Honor, so, it's a closing statement. Uh, I don't think any of this matters. Honor, hold, on, hold, on, hold, hold, on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hey, 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 hey. Hey. There's a conversation between Blue yes. and Pred and the literal subpoena. I'm just saying. Listen, <clears throat> y'all, let me speak here. In the closing statement, I'll take what he's saying. The so, hawk. I will take the information here. I look at factual information, relationships, motives, etc. Things that are circumstantial. I can take that into account. I've been here long enough. I understand what the hell I'm looking at. All right. I'm very much yes, capable sir, of you. cutting through whatever the hell has been said on either side. Don't take me yes, for sir. someone that is not. No, okay? sir. I'm just doing my due diligence for counsel for the state, making sure those objections are weighed. Thank you so much, sir. Yep, of course. I appreciate you, Your Honor. Uh-huh. All righty. Put this court in the recess as I go into deliberation. Enjoy. I'll announce when I'll be back. Uh, we'll there. see. You missed it. I think Buddha's going to get expunged to get his, uh, his bar after this. <clears throat> you seem to know more or equal to Murphy, eh? If you don't mind out here, make sure you lower your voices. I can hear you back there. Yes, Your Honor. Yes, Your Honor. All right, first off, if y'all going to be back here, don't talk him. All right. Or don't try to sway me in a certain way. If you have questions about things that I'm looking through, then I will do so. I don't need eight people here trying to make a collective decision. Understood? Would it be okay to stay just to be able to observe your decision? Yes. Yes, you may. Thank you, sir. 
I'm not trying to do a fucking judge by counsel ruling over here. Please, MDW, please. There we go. Okay. <clears throat> Crystal Clear was off duty attending a call from Arya Baker, who had asked for the help at Crystal Storefront. Crystal Crystal on Portola, Eastbourne Way. Crystal had been planning to get on duty and was at Mission Road Police Department when she received a phone call about 2008 UTC. Got a ride from Sergeant McNeil Real from MRPD to her storefront. Neil McReal noted that Lang uh, Buddha had been at MRPD running around the lobby while his blue GTR 35 was parked outside. Uh, dropped off Crystal Clear at the storefront is the last time a witness saw her safe. Went to the storefront, Crystal Clear called Lewis Broom about 2010 UTC. Uh, they set up a ride together once she was done at the storefront, but they never got the chance. Lang Buddha's phone data puts him at the storefront around 2004. Okay, so let's look at this. Give me a sec. Uh... Here's what we're gonna do. Okay, so 2004. Where is Crystal? Crystal is, sorry, 2008. Off duty at storefront. 2010. Calls Bloom. Not seen after uh crystal uh buddha 2004 triangulated to storefront Yo, Alex, thank you for 12 months. Uh, I don't have a time frame on this. Okay. Um, purchase something at 1203. Oh, sorry, 2003. Why does it keep going? This music is actually pissing me off. Uh, 23 made the purchase. Sunshine shows, shows him at the storefront at 2011. Uh, I'm going to put it to emote only, by the way, chat. Uh, one minute, one minute after... Crystal arrived at the storefront. 
Uh, wait, hold on here. So we've got... Wait, Crystal have been playing again duty and was at MRPD. Okay. Off duty, not at, MR, uh, at MRPD. Sorry, I messed that up. So between this way, she's at MRPD, goes to storefront. Okay. Uh, he was already at the storefront is what it seems to be. <sighs> One minute after clear arrives at it. So at storefront. Exact location. Do, 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 do. Actually, hold on. His phone data shows him on the move. Location is at Life Invader at 2028. Invader. 2039. Coasts of power plant on Sonora Way. 2044. All Sky All Pred. Who said about kidnapping? No pred testimony. Mm, UPD believes that the evidence presented at Lang was that MRPD looking for Crystal Clear used Arya Baker, who is Eve Summer's daughter, to lure. Uh, Crystal Clear away from RPD, kidnapped her at the storefront from here. He took her to a shoreline off of Sonora Way, hit her multiple times in the back of head, threatened for some kind of information, and left her dead floating in the sea. Uh, Clear had suffered from multiple blunt force trauma in the back of her head, but was found floating in the ocean, uh, 2140. 2140 found in ocean. Uh, with the timeline laid out above, it's meant she had been bleeding in the water for almost an hour without medical treatment. Her photo album, uh, which is her prized possession, had been burnt at its corners as if used uh, as leverage to get her to give up information. Uh, that's very circumstantial. The damage of her prized possession would have caused extreme mental distress. Uh, UPD would also like to note that this was a date of the Sanguine War, which was going on at the time of this instance. It's belief that UPD... Uh, they believe Langbitter was attempting to use Crystal Clear for one of two reasons, to either get information on Sanguine or information on what Crystal Clear knew about the meeting between Lang and Sergeant Brian Knight, which she had observed earlier. Around 2045, uh, so Pred, this lasts like a minute. Oliver Fury, after Prey get on the call about Crystal Clear's kidnapping, passed information to police officers who were on the main island. The search for Crystal began. UPD wants to note Lang Boo's phone records of the phone call show him leaving the scene of the crime. No EMS were called, nor was a location of Crystal's body given to Pred to pass on to the police. He was left to die. UPD would like to add they believe that Lang called Pred due to Crystal's loyalty to Cal Pratt as a previous sheriff and to either anger him or glow. It's very well known that Cal Pratt and Crystal Clear have a close relationship and with Lang being the head of Cerberus and Pratt being a commander under Cerberus P that he would have well known this. The statement from Kyle Pratt uh, about the phone call. This is... Uh, wow, this is good. Pratt does... I mean, it's a sworn statement, Doc but still he's not here for questioning. The statement is backed up via call logs, both Lang and Pratt. Saying that Lang, Calpred stated that Lang Buddha stated Lang Buddha. <laughs> okay, <laughs> stated that Lang Buddha that Lang... <laughs> was going to hurt Crystal, that he was going to kill Crystal, and that <laughs> that uh, Calpred was never going to see Crystal again. There would be nothing Calpred can do about it. Uh, Lang Buddha then hung up on Calpred. Calpred believes Lang did this to taunt him. According to Calpred, Lang Buddha wants to be me. 
Uh, okay, so there's like a high school fucking drama between these two. Kyle Pred stated that he believes Lang had supplied weapons to Brian Knight for the War of Sanguine the day prior to the War of Sang... For the War of Sanguine the day prior to the War of Sanguine, okay? <clears throat> yep. Uh, he states that around 40 XRPGs were purchased from Lang to Brian Knight. Uh, Kyle Pred also stated that Lang Buddha had been on the aisle... Two days prior to the war, he had been shot, captured by Sanguine Isle citizens of Baleko to the mainland via helicopter and wingsuit. Uh, okay. While this, there he spoke with Jaeger for around an hour, and Pred says Lang's phone records data would put him on the island. That's crazy. <laughs> TJ's a waffler, by the way. <laughs> it's also the UPD's belief that he did not operate in uh, alone in this. It's their belief that Lang Buddha had the help of Eve Summers using her daughter to lure Crystal Clear through a storefront as well as using Eve Summers as a lookout outside the storefront. This is believed from the text message history in Lang where he had asked her to lock the office watch outside for me. At this time, Lang would have been with Crystal Clear inside of her storefront. Eve Summers has access to all storefronts with her position as one of the real estate agents for storefronts. Eve's call data also puts her outside Crystal Clear storefront at the time of being told to watch outside the office for Lang. With this information, UPD is placing Eve Summers as an accomplice to the crimes of Lang Buddha against Crystal Clear and notes an abuse of power to lock the storefront to allow Lang to commit his crimes. It is also the UPD's belief that Lang used Luciano Dicenzo as some kind of pickup or drop off from the Sonora Way area. Lang texted. Lucia and well, Lang texted and called Luciano around 220, 2020, 2020, 2020, 2020, 2020, 2020, at this time. Uh, phone data puts this on. Right, this time, Lang and Crystal's phone data puts them at the same location, meaning he would have still been kidnapped by him. It's the UPD's belief that Lang asked Luciano for some kind of assistance in a crime, ping the location, etc. Uh, okay. Uh, we're not talking too much about Luciano. He's already been processed, he's not appealing. Uh, it's CPD's belief that Arya Baker works for multiple of Lang Buddha's businesses. The time instance was used as a lure. I think we covered that. Arya, also Eve Summer's daughter, see report to his connection. Arya texted Senate alone before Arya arrived at Crystal Clear storefront. At the evidence, GPD is pushing accomplice charges on Arya for assistance and getting clear what she can describe as an ambush. Uh, Arya's there. She's been processed. Everyone's been processed. Okay. Uh, so Eve, uh, front of storefront, uh, time of, uh, crystal clear kidnapping. I mean, I don't know if this is actually kidnapping or not. So we're doing this with in reason. Uh, okay. Let me go back to the actual other report. Give me one sec. Uh, actually, it's on the bottom of it. So Eve was in Vinewood area and went down to Rockford.
See, this is like the hard part with this shit. For the appeal side to it, which I would have wished they could have actually, they should have done, honest to God, is like, I wish they brought some something up and gave context because they're basically telling me to look over the fucking report and figure out if it's there or not. I, I wish there was like some sort of test when I give it some fucking anything. I'm not looking at Luciano. I don't care about this. Uh... Where is Crystal Clear's stuff in this? That's why I'm asking. I don't see this. Other than... Okay, so I guess if I'm going off of this, right? Uh, hold on. Give me a second. I don't have like the a ton of raw data on Clear, do I? It's Eve, it's Lang, and then there's a copy of where Crystal is. Let's look at the phone things. Give me a sec. Uh, bring that up. So as per, okay. Um, I don't have this on the screen. You guys can't exactly see it right now. Um, here's what I'll do. I'm just going to copy and paste this real quick. Uh, this is some like information on the report. So you can see this down here. This is, uh,
Ready? I don't know.
Chat, I'm going to hide my notes now while I write my final. Uh, by the way, thank you for the follows. If you're new to this channel, go ahead. Please hit the follow button for me real quick. All right. Sorry as well if you were gifted a sub or got given a sub or a sub. Uh, I fortunately have not been paying attention too much to it. I'll get to those after this. Uh, usually when this stuff does occur, uh, I do like to take the full time and actually think about things and don't pay attention to usually what's happening. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just typing.
Alrighty. Y'all make your own individual decisions. Uh, yeah, I've certainly tried. Got some thoughts. I'm interested to hear what you decide, though. Alrighty. Well, then why don't we go out with this? All rise for the Honorable John Ba- <clears throat> The defense never rises. They never do. All righty. Everyone here in present. Prosecution's yep. here, Your Honor. On our side, yes, yes Your Honor. Mr. Speedy. Motion and Don't Speedy care. character witness. A little, little late for that one. Is that the surprise witness that you had, Murphy? Actually, I'm curious. Who did you want to actually add? Um, yeah, it was it was definitely Speedy. That's, that seems like a lie. Yeah, huh? You tell me, Ash. The words not that it affects been, anything, but I'm actually just curious. It would have been, it would have been Ash Ketchup, Your Honor. Oh, huh. alrighty. Oh, they didn't mention her name at all conveniently. Uh, conveniently, you didn't do anything but mention triangles for real. <laughs> Selective hearing at its finest. All right, let's call us back into session. All righty. Today we hear the appeal of Miss Eve Summers and Mr. Buddha, and there's a fair amount of information back and forth. Not a ton of it, honestly. All this is new to me and my... Hmm, how long has it been? Rain and a half, four, four years, something like that, doing this. First time I've ever seen triangles been brought into the courthouse. That's that's a new one for me. Uh, I think I understand all that, truthfully. Took me a little bit to get it. Apologies, I'm old on this one. All righty. Go through each one of these. Prosecution. These are things that we need to highlight and uh, discuss from both sides here. First off, your report. Oh, Lord. You have three separate subpoenas that have been submitted at some point in time, though you don't submit any of the raw data. It's also on Murphy's side to it as well. You use the raw data to validate the claims of the cell phone triangulation, which you've provided. It's essential to produce and present raw data as it is. Lay a little bit more credibility to the evidence and not paint much of a narrative. You're using the information there that you can snip it out yourself, whereas others can actually go ahead and make some conclusions based upon it considering there's no testimony which brings me to the next part witness testimony oh lord we don't really have anything that's it we had some information brought up against uh, mr kyle pratt is a central figure here in the prosecution's case and his credibility was uh, contested and frankly y'all should have called pratt if you wanted further information about this now the next part is the motive did we establish a clear motive here? I don't think we did at this point. And also direct evidence. Do we have any evidence of this? We have a lot of circumstantial evidence of triangles overlapping and where people were found. But what actual other evidence do we have other than doctor's reports where the person spells pneumonia completely incorrect? For the fans. Here's what we have. We have technical evidence. You all question triangulation. You have potential inaccuracies or pitfalls of relying on just cell phone triangulation, but you also didn't clarify or provide any narratives whatsoever either. Do you even support or provide an alibi for anything? You have some character testimonies that have been brought forth, but frankly, once again, nothing to substantiate any of that. Also, at the same time, you should be able to clearly refute all the claims that have been made systematically either providing evidence or logical arguments for each that you're refuting 
And once again, just as the other one addressed the motives here. Frankly, you're allowing me and giving me all this information to go ahead and say, hey, make your decision. I'm providing you feedback that y'all can do to do your damn jobs that much better. So as a conclusion, <clears throat> while the prosecution has a fair amount of circumstantial evidence, defense raises concerns about the credibility. Given the information provided, there seems to be significant reasonable doubts raised by the defense. The prosecution, while presenting circumstantial evidence, fails to conclusively tie the accused to the crime. The defense raises questions about the reliability of testimonies and accuracy of technical evidence as well. Based upon that and the evidence given, I find these two not guilty based upon the principle that the accused are presumed innocent until proven guilty beyond a reasonable doubt. The evidence as presented leaves room for such a doubt. That's my final rule. Thank you, Your Honor. Let's Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. Yes, of course. Thank you so much, Your Honor. Do you mind if we talk, Your Honor, just so I can understand things more clear or to do better in the future? Yes, of course. Thank you. Your Honor, may I have my weapons license back? You can deal with whoever the hell took it away from you. Someone up here can give it to you. If it's related to that and nothing else, then go ahead. I, I don't care. That's fine. Yeah, they noted on the docket they pulled it pertaining to these charges. So uh, I'm going to just go ahead and hand it yeah, Go ahead. Yes. Yes, they did. All righty. Uh, What's your questions? Uh, just talk it out of the way, if you don't mind. Is this being used? No, it's not. Okay, no, it's not. <clears throat> All righty. Uh, okay, so my main questions are, like, does the, like, the tracking data... Yes. Um, I'm just kind of confused how we literally have lying on top of Crystal's body, but that's not enough to say that he was anything to do with it. It's not saying that he didn't have anything to do with it. It's what his involvement with it was. Is there enough conclusive evidence or not that he definitively did or committed these acts? You have him as the primary actor in which you have his kidnapping, act of torture, and attempted murder. What we have here is evidence that supports that he was around it. It is not definitive by any nature, by any means. We have spontaneous utterance. We have Kyle Pred phone logs in which Kyle Pred claims that. Where's the spontaneous utterance? In the, in the subpoenas Actually, and the report. In which part? In the Kyle Pred subpoena, or sorry, in the Lang Buddha subpoena. No, and no, she's going to yeah, get specific. If you go to the Lucenzo subpoena and then open the report that's in that. Once again, it's important and imperative to actually include the raw information and data so that we look at it. You have the information there. Do such, and I understand that we can and we no, I already admitted that have. was a fuck up of mine. I, I, I already admitted that that was me and this week's been crazy for me and I barely slept, but I should have, that was me for not data, producing that. Why are we producing their cell phone data when they have it in the palm of their hand? There's a part of this that you're forgetting is my own. You have to present it to me. I don't have either of the data. I can take two or three different sentences here. I can twist it, put it in any sentence, narrate it, whatever. I can do whatever the hell I want to with this. To paint did the actual you picture. The, the timeline that I, I made? Oh, the absolutely I did. And I established my own based upon the report as well. I actually went through the report, put a timestamp regarding each and, each and every individual supposedly involved with this situation, independent to your own report. We also have the information for Mr. Luciano. We have the information for Mr. Langbuda and for Mr. Eve Summers. You have some of the cell phone triangulation from Crystal Clear, but frankly, you only have it as an overlapping graph 
that is where the actual location where her body was found, where the storefront is. We don't have her own pinging information back and forth either. And this is who's your honor? This is Crystal Cleus. If you at any point during this, we have her at her the storefront. storefront. Yeah, we no phone calls were made. How can we produce something that was never? You have it 2008 off duty at MRPD 2010 calls bloom at storefront not seen afterwards 2140 found in the ocean. Yeah, and you're, uh, that, that's, you're either asking us to produce or you're, you're I don't have that information. I don't have anything with it. I don't have any text. I don't have anything else. Of crystal clear's phone in the ocean, your honor. I understand what you're saying with this. What I'm telling you is that I also don't have any raw information regarding her as well. You're asking me to make a summary judgment based upon snippets of information, essentially summary judgment, without having the entirety of it, only the pieces that you have picked out and pointed and given to me. Respectfully, Your Honor, you, you wouldn't... Me. Sorry, go ahead. Um, Respectfully, Your Honor, you wouldn't have been able to do anything with the triangulation data anyway. It requires a certain way to figure that out. The only other just, I don't even know how to do it. There's only certain detectives who know how to do it. Like, if I physically can't even do it myself. That's why I provided all of those pictures. If you with needed all to be, of that data translated. If you needed to be spoon-fed uh, okay. the triangles... The, okay, no. you know what? Um, I would, yeah, I would. I I understand not having like the raw data of like the text and the calls, um, to then be able to compare with what I put on the timeline, but that's why I put it on the timeline so it was easier to understand in like a more concise format. But I understand not like having that raw data to back that up. Like I, I get that, but I, in my opinion, I feel like there should have been enough like comparison and enough like those calls. Uh, of the triangles were from the, that phone subpoena. Like, I couldn't have got them from thin air. Like, um... Oh, I understand yeah. you can't get them from thin air. I wholeheartedly agree with this. I, I get this. It is great evidence to have. It is not definitive evidence, though. It is not going to tell you that they physically kidnapped someone and the nature of how they did it. It is not going to tell me how they did it. It will tell me that this these individuals are close to each other it's really we, uh, good for that oh believe we me the, we produce the raw uh the raw output and we submit that into evidence as a guilty uh, verdict then if you can actually put some context behind it and establish a motive as discussed how could, before how could i we weren't witnesses and they weren't i'm asking you with the information given here today the raw output verdict guilty or not guilty I think that it's a very naive statement to make if you're actually intending that I can make just based upon that. This also changes the nature of the case depending on how that information is submitted, interpreted, and also put back for also defense to establish that. There's also the I, possibility of witness testimonies on top of it. I did put a motive in, Your Honor. I stated it in my statement. It could have been this, this or could with... have been that. There was two separate things there. Yeah, I can't exactly get a motive when they don't want to talk to me. And I wasn't available also uh, due to some personal reasons. To they, when, the, when, when they were arrested and the warrants were placed out, uh, I immediately had to not be there for personal reasons. Um, so I guess it's just unfortunate that I then couldn't interrogate the suspects to question any like motive or anything. Um, and I was, you know, can't force them, but I was hoping they would speak today. Um, you know, it is what it is. Um, that's why I, you know, I had Pred's statement. And though, yes, uh, I would also like to add that his statement uh, was before all the war happened. So if they want to call his, his you know, statement non-credible, whatever, like, all of this happened prior to the, the war of Sanguine. So he w didn't have any, like, treason or anything at that time. Um, so I did, I guess, interview him once he was in jail afterwards. But either way, this statement about, like, Crystal and being missing was on the day of the war. So... It, it's rare Probably I have this it. issue, but I'm having an issue finding where the reasonable doubt is. We have cell phone tower data of them being in the... So, I won't say... Metal it, it's not the reasonable line. doubt here. You have to understand, you actually have to prove it. You haven't proven well, anything. Well, you well, have well, contextual well, information. I was, going, I was going to touch on that uh, as well as it, it ties into that statement, Your Honor, was off the shoreline with an ocean dump body uh affiliates through businesses and previous crimes being called and within that same area uh the texts and 
abuse of uh, storefront access, uh, tied with Ash Ketchup's spontaneous utterance, Neil McReel's uh, spotting of Lang Buddha and statement in the report. You have all of this evidence. I don't understand where the reasonable doubt is, and it sounds like you're saying that there wasn't a reasonable doubt, and it's just that we didn't prove it? Or was there a mixture? I'm trying to understand. Yeah, I guess my thing is, is like, he literally was on top of Crystal's body, proved with the location data, and then he leaves the Crystal's body in the ocean and calls Pred and tells him that he's never going to see Crystal again. Do me a favor. In report 91091. Got it open already. Tell me. Where in there is any mention of Ash? Uh, it's in the other it's, one. It's, it's in 90872. It's also in the subpoenas, your honor. Still, Sir, the Luciano did you bring that subpoena. up whatsoever? Was Ash's name ever mentioned here? Yes. In closings. In when closing. I trusted you and the rest of the DOJ to look at all of the evidence, your honor. Oh, son, you trusted me. I did look at all the evidence. Unfortunately, brought in zero then witnesses. How come you can't tell me where Ash Ketchup's name is, your honor, if you looked at it? I did. Where, where did you bring it up at any is, point in testimony? Where? Yes. What in point closings, did you have? No you have. Your sh- honor. Stop talking to me for just a second here. You have all this information. You have all this big picture that you're all privy to and the information that you have. You may think beyond reasonable doubt you have this conviction 100% nailed to the wall. Everything nailed in. Huh, oh, absolutely. You might dead the rights everything that you have. You need to be able to produce that. Put it into a way that people that us, the Department of Justice, that stands for both sides of this can understand and put together. You are privy to more information than I have. You understand you have to package this information in a way that I can actually translate it and put it into a way where I can make a conviction. You have failed to do that. Is a three page timeline not enough? The evidence, the testimony, everything is enough. I need it in order to actually do something with it. What you have is snippets of information taken from subpoenas and put into a narrative in order to paint that. The narrative is the report. We've been told by the DOJ countless times, Your Honor, that if there's no witnesses in courtroom, then their testimony via reports will be weighed accordingly. That has continuously been proven to not be accurate. Uh, I'm sorry for having the faith that the DOJ finally kept their word I don't know how many times I can be burned by words on a paper not actually meaning shit. Uh, excuse my French, but that has been shoved down the PD's throat of your word on paper is just the same as you speaking in court, but obviously fucking not, your honor. Clearly this conversation is not going to go any further, Mr. Bloom, and I it's highly great. recommend I that you step out of here and call yourself off. I, I'm completely cool, Your Honor. I'm looking for one specific answer that I've asked twice and it hasn't been answered. If no, you son, you're asking say, for an answer, answer that it only suits your narrative of what you no. want to hear. Your Honor, may I repeat the question and you can tell me to step out or you can answer it and I'll just take it, whatever you, your response is. Can I ask it one more time for the third time? Your Honor, can I just say that I didn't please, like... No, please let in- me ask. Just just let him answer so either I can walk out of here or I can ask my question and he can tell me to fuck off. And what's going to be the outcome of that answer for you? Because frankly, I, there's more contextual decide, information Honor. that you're going to either be upset, play, fuck the DOJ as everyone else loves no. to do, or just can walk out of here storming once again, fuck the DOJ because I we lost something. I would hope that Adams can speak up for me here and, taking, and saying that I personally take pretty fucking good... Uh, constructive criticism from the doj your honor uh i guess since you're not going to say yes or no i'll just ask it and then you can tell me to fuck off or not but was it a reasonable doubt or was it us not creating uh not proving it your honor that's what i've asked and i have given you that answer answer. okay do you mind do you uh, mind refreshing my memory your honor yes i actually read it in the closing did you not hear that i certainly did but you've contradicted yourself in here no i said based upon the principle that the accused are presumed innocent until proven beyond a reasonable doubt the evidence as presented 
leaves room for such doubt. That's exactly what I say in my closing statement. I, I will agree that that is what you said in your closing statement. That's not what you said in here. You got whatever answer you're looking for. Yes, sir. I had something to say, but now I can't remember it because you didn't let me speak. Uh, okay, uh, I guess my question, I'm trying to remember the exact wording I wanted to use. Um, oh, that was it. So, uh, Respectfully, I didn't feel the need to like read out the entire report in the courtroom because, you know, I thought that would just be kind of a waste of time and that you could read the report within your own time during deliberation. Was that a mistake on my part? Not just like reading out all the points from the report or what would you have like preferred, I guess, is my question. Well, this comes down from judge to judge and Adams might do it differently from myself. I personally enjoy things actually being pointed as evidence and raw evidence at that. And I have said in multiple cases before, if you give me all the separate line item, individual evidence with it and point to it, I can do that. I would prefer personally there is back and forth between some sort of witness. If there is any, any testimony given with it. Frankly, it didn't make me any happier, for example, with Murphy and what the hell he did and say there's nothing there. I was looking for some context. Y'all asked me basically to do a summary judgment of everything. Yeah, it's just unfortunate. It's normally judges I do is just say they want to read it in their own time. Okay, that's, that's just unfortunate. I should have just delve into it more. Okay. I agree that we were looking for a summary judgment because the defense had no witnesses and refused to testify and had zero alibi. It's yeah, essentially what I had to do. kind of confuses me. Like, the fact that I literally have Langs, uh, you know, on top of Crystal's body, like, at the time that she was kidnapped, like, what else, to, like, even could even be, like, you know, noted there? Like, but I don't know. It just kind of makes me feel like location tracking data is kind of useless. I wouldn't say context. it's useless. I think there's context. It's not the end all be all of all data. It is very strong evidence. It is not all the evidence. It, it's a basically, I mean, we'd have convictions with something else. Uh, th this just came to mind. This isn't an argument I was going to bring up in court or anything, but it's the same as having blood on scene. It, it basically is. Uh, I wouldn't I mean, go down can, that route there. I can speak to it myself that it's not. If it were, uh, Robbie and Miguel would have gone to prison for murdering the commissioner. My point being is, if there's a gunfight exchange in the burger shop parking lot, and one party gets away, and we collect that evidence of blood proving that they were there at the time, or that that see that's the thing. That this is the point I'm bringing up is blood doesn't have a timeline. That blood could have been there prior or after, but yeah. guess what? It's enough for a warrant and a conviction. Do me a favor. Let, let's go out here real quick. All right. All right. And I'll, <clears throat> Adams, let me move this way, please. Yeah, sure. Sorry. All right. Come out here. Let's go to the projector because I can't do it in here. All right. All right. So let's look at this. Okay. Yep. The difference between blood, for example, and triangulation data. Doesn't have a timestamp. Well, first off, doesn't have a timestamp. Also, you look at this and you say, all right, well, technicality wise, they could look at this and be anywhere in that triangle. Correct. Blood places them at a very specific location. But doesn't I have the time with it. Time, I did state in a timeline that Crystal was at the storefront. Oh, I understand. Believe me, I get this. Their triangles are exactly overlapping. Of Neil's uh, statement said that he Yep, absolutely. I have that written down as well. Yeah. This one, this one. So, that means Crystal and I were at the same spot. No, I just, uh, I 
just turn it into a wide area, which is why I clarified like the exact area within that triangle with the statement. Yeah, one sec. You have to know, sir, I started looking on based upon the information that you provided. These were my own that I tried to establish on my own part. real one uh i yeah she, she made the quarter bloom at 2010 utc um and that's when neil dropped off because neil states that in his statement uh when... yeah neil stated that um crystal made a phone call to bloom and she arrived at her storefront which is how i knew that that was the time that they arrived um which was it and then they showed on the phone subpoenas that that was 2010. <sighs> Correct. Yeah. All I know is that I was able to sick. And my Alrighty. So, if we look back at this, you have on here the kidnapping part to it, right? Let me see. Mm -hmm. Kidnapping a government employee, attempted murder of a government employee, act of torture. All right. Yeah. At what point is the act of torture brought in? Uh, it's in the statement. Uh, her. Find her. Photo. Her photo book. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what could substantiate that a little bit further? What was the status of the binder in the past week? Do you have a statement with that? When did she notice it was burned? I don't have anything with that. it was very like it was fresh like it it just happened so i took it off and checked it and that's when it had been like uh i had seen that it had been burnt on the corners and obviously with my knowledge as a police officer the kind of burns that it had received was clearly the kind of like ones that were done to pressure somebody into giving information because why if not why not just burn the whole thing you know if you burn slightly of something that you, you pressure them and that's why i went for mental torture because the torture uh, charge specifically states mental torture as well. And where is that in any of the testimony given? There was no testimony. Or Sorry, right, my part in any of the report other than the binder being listed. Do we have anything that was uh, predating yeah, or uh, after dating that? Uh, Judge mean, Bailey, like, may I have a word? Here, yeah, give me a minute. Like, not burnt. Sure. Correct. I mean, for all that I know with this, it might have been burned beforehand. It might have been something that she was holding on to because she was in fear of her life. And that's the one thing she had left with her. I don't know any of that contextual information with it. I wrote it in the report as, uh, uh her photo album, which is her prized possession has, uh, had been burned at, at its corners as if used as leverage to give up her information for her to give up information correct how when where why this that was burnt <sighs> to give up leverage of information because then i did know that the it was on the day of the sanguine war and that lang was attempting to use crystal clear for one of two <laughs> reasons either to get information on the war of sanguine <laughs> or information on what crystal clear knew about a meeting between lang butter and sergeant brian knight which she had observed earlier yes yeah, so those are two uh two paragraphs that you had listed there Mr. Brian Knight would have been good to have one for this way as well, because he actually called Mr. Knight in between calling Kyle Pratt. He's been MIA since he got fired, so... It's fine. It's still good to have further information, because there's a phone call made in that timeline that was established. Oh. 
I think it's just like the fact that this was more of an appeal rather than like a prosecution case that I didn't really feel like any of that more was necessary because like if I feel like it was prosecution I would have gone with that but it wasn't it was an appeal like it's on the other side to prove like why they didn't do it and they didn't give shit so they just said okay, it's not what trustworthy okay So I guess I'm just confused on that part. When you come here, it's the same thing, to my opinion, that you should be bringing all the information that you came forth with that is going to make that conviction be upheld to begin with. You need that you same see? strength of evidence. If you believe it to be one versus the other, you need strength across both of them. Not just one. So in the future, you want us to treat it like we brought the docket trial up? just to confirm you should have all the information available as if it was yes understood this is your judgment being brought into question i understand how we do things in the city is not normal compared to what we see on the outside normally you bring someone in have the charges read to them then they get to go see the judge and then get sentence afterwards not exactly how it works here right we work in a completely different system unfortunately so it's a little bit more obscure but at the same time you need to have that strength of information on both sides to this yeah i guess i wish that just kind of been explained beforehand because i kind of went into this with like oh they're gonna have to prove why they weren't guilty not us having to push like we put the docket up because we didn't you know i that's think that's just the a... i know okay. for the future so that's that's completely on me and that will never happen again so that's that's the fault of your counsel and i'm sorry Well, I'll just, uh, I'll just bring live PD with me everywhere and have everything recorded in the future, Your Honor. I'll, uh, if anyone ever gets Great. suspected of, you know, if Crystal Clear's life is in danger, I'll just have a camera follower. Yep, thank you, Bloom. Okay. So, what steps did you go through to ascertain that 30-minute timeline? Uh, um, and then I'll ask you, did you hear that 30 minute timeline presented by the prosecution at any point? <laughs> no, or was this just on your own person? No, I take that part of the conversation. Okay. So you're just taking the timeline in the report and taking it uh, as straight gospel. Uh, well, it's if they said it out loud, does that out. make it different? <clears throat> uh, well, it... All right, chat. Hello. You're allowed. Oh, and by the way, I think the prosecution did not do all they oh, should they have both done did to prove it. Like, no, I think they both did. I made a lot of mistakes. Yeah. Uh. But the timeline, plus you can verify the the times on the uh, on the evidence on the, the triangulation. Sure. Uh, did you make note of the text messages that were referred to in the timeline? Uh, I weighed them a lot less because there wasn't any anything to back them up. Provided. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That was unfortunate. That that so changed all around for me. You then acknowledge that it's it's clear that a, a hand selected narrative has been presented by the prosecution to make their case uh, without then providing anything else that could have undermined it or that we could have even used hell not even undermine but just to prove it right we're taking something wrapped in quotation marks as, as gospel uh, as yep they texted that with no proof to the court <laughs> I ruined it by not giving Murphy contempt yeah I'm sorry. <laughs> Yo, Anonymous, thank you for the five gifted. Uh, Spanner, I think you had two more on top of that, and a fair amount of singular ones here as well. Uh, Pat Chilmer, Leah Dura. Uh, two times, Pat with a new tier one sub. Daisy, what's going on, Daisy, with 21? Uh, I think I got Alex as well. Thank you all for the subs, resubs, new existing subs, and all of you that came in with the follows. Appreciate that. Sure, but for the prosecution too, where is she to talk about and kind of substantiate and give some context to, you know, her affirmative statement that got these subpoenas signed? Uh, where is Crystal Clear? Where... I think she was sitting right here, but she didn't... She was indeed in the courtroom. So I don't know why that didn't help, yes. Okay. And... I mean, so I, I... I think I, there are an awful lot of circumstances here. Mm -hmm. uh, but circumstantial evidence, even in this package, to me, doesn't rise to a point where it's proof beyond a reasonable doubt. 
they're 98 percent of the way what would you what would you i guess the question is what would make it beyond a reasonable doubt then Go ahead, Miss Adams. Sorry, I'm looking for something specific in the report that I wanted to me to say. Judge gets me. I have a sincere question on the motive. Um, and, and I understand that they can't necessarily compel the defendants to talk, right? Uh, but I look back at the time. And I read this specific paragraph, right? I read the paragraph about the United Unified Police Department wanting to know that this was the date of the Sanguine War, which was ongoing at the time of this incident. Uh, although, interestingly enough, when we were in the back just now, Pond said it was before the war. Uh, I find that interesting. Uh, it's the belief of the police department that they believe Langwood was attempting to use Crystal Clear for one of two reasons, to either get information on the War of Sanguine or information on what Crystal knew about a meeting between Langwood and Sergeant Brian Knight, right? Mm -hmm. Why would why would they have any reason to believe that Crystal had information about the war? One, two, if there's information about a meeting between Langboot and Brian Knight, why isn't there anything to articulate why why they would want to expand on that? So they have a motive here uh, that is largely a glass cannon that they haven't expanded on. They've given us an either or without really committing to either one. Uh, I can't imagine they wouldn't have been able to speak to Brian Knight about this meeting. Uh, and, and again, can't imagine that they would have any information on what Crystal Clear would know about the war. Without a motive that I think I can articulately point at, I don't think there's reasonable doubt here uh, when all you have is, is circumstantial evidence. There's no means, there's no motive. It's that, hey, all of these things circumstantially happen, mm -hmm. and we think Lang did it, but we can't prove it, is what this really boils down to for me. And what without anything have, else, I, assuming this case was argued properly um, and had all the evidence that they discussed and all the assertions they made were correct about what the evidence was and what the witnesses would say, what additional evidence would you have needed to hear to be to convict? Listen, <clears throat> if you want an actual conviction here, while you can use the triangulation of these individuals and some contextual information from the text messages and establish a timeline for those there right there's a very large gap of time that does happen here usually when you have data information or breaks in the uh, visual those are causes for concern that happen we have established only timeline based upon text messages we enforce that officers in multiple cases that we have done before is that should they lose sight or should they not have information pertaining to the individual for a period of time that they're missing they need to provide it you've got frankly an hour and a half do we have any idea of when that actually occurred do we have all the people involved with it do we have any Sort of an instrument that had been used to do it just blunt force on top of it we have a doctor's report we have this information that's put into a timeline the timeline is exactly it all a factual information that's pointed in the timeline well yes most of it for triangulation but not for the actual items that are they're being charged with do we know the manner in which they were kidnapped we have it they were there frankly you can go on all this information and say oh well mr buddha did see it happen he failed to report a crime followed the person there shit for all i care at this point i have no idea what the hell happened you can paint that a thousand different ways you have all this information where this triangular information gets put in where they can be at any point in that triangle it's like I've resorted to a, uh, a confidence interval. You all familiar with that? Yes. At any point in time, that individual could be seen within that triangle. What you're saying there is that Miss Eve Summers could technically almost be on Del Powell Freeway. 
What you're saying there is Mr. Buddha could almost be a close to the golf course. Mr. Crystal Clear could be at the courthouse. That's what that proves to me. Sure, they overlap. Is it a precise moment? No. They are anywhere within that triangle. Does that mean that they were together? I have no idea. So at any point in time, triangulation proves to me that they were in an area, not that they were together. But how about the fact that Crystal and Lang specifically were in numerous different areas uh, for extended times, uh, including extremely... Uh, yes, of course. Rarely traveled there. By the power plant. <laughs> Once again, could be anywhere in that area. Do you know the act that actually occurred there? It's not that big of an area. No, I get it. But it still doesn't prove what actually happened. Only that they were in the area. When it comes down to the act itself, the attempted murder, the kidnapping, the act of torture, what do we have that has been presented that indicates that, in this case, that Lang Buddha was the primary individual who carried out that act and that Eve Summers acted as a complex? We have circumstance they were in the same area. What else is there? I mean, from, from the evidence in here, I mean, I agree. I think the text messages can't really be given as much weight because all of the data wasn't mm -hmm. there. So I kind of, I take those with more of a grain of salt. But I do think that just saying, I think that there's a good argument for like what you said, Bailey, with triangulation, but Ling Buddha bought something from Eve's store, so he was at the storefront. Oh, at some point, yes, he was. He was uh, close to when, I mean, it's alleged. That 2003, he was at the storefront. Yeah. Um, so he was placed there at, you know, in, in a relatively you know, close span of time, not exactly. And then I do think, you know, there's an argument to be made in the city where there's a bunch of different stores, uh, places you could go, you know, and you could be that there's a stronger argument they could be anywhere in the triangle. But I do think when two people who were both in, uh, you know, the same triangle like Crystal Storefront, and then they're in a very secluded area that nobody really has a reason to be at all for an extended period of time, and he makes the call to Kyle Pred uh, in that location. And, and also to Mr. Brian Knight, keep that in mind. Yeah. But he, he does make the call to Kyle Pratt alleged. I don't know, you know, you can take um, what Kyle said that he said on the phone to not, you know, be true or, you know, to cast doubt on it. But he did say Crystal was hurt and Crystal did end up being injured when they found her. Um, I, I just, I feel like in a very secluded area, if they're there for an extended period of time and then one one of the phones doesn't leave that area and the other one does and the person ends up in the water face down for like you know over an hour that that's pretty strong evidence of something occurring there with so i i once again then would ask you um uh you're, you're considering the call to kyle Pratt, and this is actually a point that i want to bring um you are taking the interpretation that it was written into the report that what Kyle said over the phone was factual. That, uh, counter that, and then you had the presentation from the defense that Kyle Pred was on sanguine at the time, was in the act of actively committing treason, uh, mm -hmm. and and may or may not have ulterior motive based on individuals uh, such as Lang, uh, who were still domestic and largely in support of said oh i don't I, I was taking the fact he said crystal was injured not who he said did it so right but but, you, but but consider but consider the source in the consider the source in the origination the phone call comes from who uh fred right who oh from buddha from? you mean oh playing, yeah. yeah right so uh i i would have liked to see either side instead of just throwing out yeah he said this oh he's a treason why isn't he just to speak to him? and then both sides can ask their question so that we can draw a more clear conclusion on what actually happened here 
I can write words on a piece of paper and say Kyle Pratt said this all day long. Everything I'm Kyle Pred said, the, 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 the quote-unquote Kyle Pred said, is all hearsay. It is, but um, I don't. There's, there's just so much circumstantial. It's just another thing to add on to this very long list. If it was that by itself, obviously, you know, there's nothing there. But it's not all that is. Frankly, it was a piss poor job from both sides. That is true. Oh, yes, we can't argue that. If, if one side actually came out, I'm going to say, swinging with something. Something that is more substantial than just a report that I have to read in the back here and try to formulate everything that happened. If there is any additional information they can provide, any timelines, any additional data, other than, hey, Here's what we want to point out. Here's the evidence. Ah, right, here you go. Go for it. Oh, here's a report number. Here's what we took for the report number. Guess what? It happens all the time. We can say something right now. And guess what? Taken completely out of context. That's why it's always good to conclude or include rather all the information that you do have with it. That's why I told Murphy he's an idiot for not motion and compel to actually get the evidence with it. I'm sorely disappointed by the amount of effort put in with this. I understand there is a substantial amount of effort that went into putting the triangulation stuff there. But now when it comes to court, can you actually do it? And they frankly did not. A lot of it you got to remember is it comes down to the presentation in the courtroom on the given day as well. You can only work with what's put in front of you. Uh, if every case were just decided by, hey, go back and read the evidence, why are we having trial? I mean, in this case, you kind of had to go back and read the evidence since nobody really presented anything. Yeah, it's not ideal. This was, there wasn't I really much presented that. to... <laughs> there wasn't really anything to go off of. Based on, I, I agree with you 100. percent Both sides did not do, no, it was, in it my was opinion, what they should have done. Presentation. But you know, I'm going based off of what was presented in court and then what is in the evidence, because that's and I guess most of the determination in this case has to be made off of what's in the evidence and what was submitted, because there's there was nothing in the courtroom to really go off of. Correct. Anything else? No, I appreciate the explanation. Yeah, I, I just, I would have loved to have some form of argumentation for it. Mm -hmm. Either way, too. I, I really I mean, would have loved to yes, see that. Yes, that's the problem. Mm -hmm. All right, I'm curious, and I don't care if you don't want to say this in a group, but I'm actually interested to see. Guilty or not guilty? Each one of y'all. I'm in line with you. Guilty. Or not guilty. Sorry. Style. Of Lang, I think I might have gone guilty. I don't know if I would have for the rest. Yeah, what the hell is there for Eve? I That's think the thing. They the, I think the text I think Lang did it. Spicy. But I but go not... not guilty because there is reason yeah. doubt. It's the law. Mm, I'm 50. I would. I don't know. I think the. Go to your head right now. You have to make a decision. Uh, I probably would have said guilty of kidnapping and attempted murder, no to conspiracy, oh, act of yes. torture, I and then no I would have said torture. not guilty to Eve on all charges. Mm. That's the thing, act of torture wasn't really substantiated. Act of torture, they the would have start. needed yes. a lot more medical reports mm -hmm. and probably... Do you want to know what the act of torture report. was? Yeah, what was, they claimed for? It was alluded to, but they it didn't even the, really... It was the photo binder. Oh, oh, yeah. I, they so didn't they, even explain that in court they that that's what they were referring that, yes. to. So. Uh, I gone got you. They pointed out one time during the statement and tried to tell me afterwards that the binder was an act of torture with it. I said, what was the state of the binder before and afterwards and everything else? That all oh, was freshly burned. I said, how am I supposed to know that? Yeah, no, that's a terrible argument. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. 
overall could have just just could have been presented a lot better um oh, absolutely I think the right call was made based on what was presented to the court on this day. Hey, I have a completely unrelated question. Sure. Go for it. Uh, incident report number, give me a second, I lost it because you need it. Nine three nine eight eight. Three days after this incident report got created and the warrant issued, Pablo Cortez got oh, added to it. Oh, hey. Charges got added to it, and he was processed. But there is no knowledge of who did anything with that, and we aren't sure if it's just a bug with the MBW or what we being uh, Remington the original processing officer but those two counts of attempted second degree murder are on uh, Pablo Cortez's record now uh, possibly could be something related to the FNX there that was used in a previous thing I don't know but typically it's those not. things that's, are done with the original what, report why it was brought up to me is it's not this is just on there for no reason is there anything should he be told about this and suggest he appeals and then the police not contest the appeal what should what what is the course of action here uh what the hell uh, this man's name isn't in the report there's no evidence tying to him at all exactly in the summary added, statement there's nothing days. indicating that Pablo Cortez was involved at all it was added multiple days after the incident the report was done created according to the creating officer Officer, All right, so he give me a second. Look up uh, uh, Mr. Cortez just by his profile and look at any of the most recent, actually, most recent incident from Mr. Cortez. Yeah, he has one 10 days ago and one 21 days ago. The one 21 days ago is actually for two right. times attempted murder or second degree. So the same thing. My guess is that the charges were duplicated. That, that was my thought, and that's the, the charging officers, the reporting officers thought. We just don't know the course of action to do at this point. So you don't know that there's no even there's not even any question or concern that Mr. Cortez was even reprocessed on those. This just showed up. This just showed up, correct. And this was brought to you by the arresting officer, not by, by Mr. Cortez. Elizabeth Rivington. Okay. Yes. Because the because they're likely looking into this warrant that's out for this other guy for yeah, negligent ownership. Yeah, it's paperwork and she's annoyed by it. Yes. Uh, TTU. Uh, let's look. TTU, 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 TTU. If there is nobody taking ownership for it in the PD, uh, if there is not a guilty plea, I believe it could just be withdrawn and dropped by the officer, would it not? I. But the only issue that with that would be okay, me. was Mr. Cortez fined for this incident uh, a second time? For the time incident of on the 21st, yes. Was he fined for the incident on the 12th? Has anyone spoken to Mr. Cortez? It's all process. I don't believe that there was an incident on the 12th. That's what Remington is informed. Okay. That's not the question I'm asking. Was he fined for it? Okay. That, I don't know the answer. Was he, was he, has anyone spoken to him at, at any point in this process? I do not know. Don't believe well, so. Have Remington speak with the individual, see what the hell it is, get his story straight, and I'm not going to go ahead and beat around a bush and try to figure something out that I have no context for. Right. There does seem to be some issue with it, and I highly recommend that the person that is asking these questions actually speak with the individual. Okay, I'll tell you to, to reach out to him. Yeah, find out if he was arrested. Find out if he was processed. If it's not, she owns the report and she can do whatever she wants. Right. Okay, yeah. I will let her know that. Thank you. Uh-huh. All right. 
Anything else y'all need? No, sounds great. Thank you for help. Uh-huh. I'm gonna head on out of here. Have a good day. Your vacation at Calby? Why not just fix Bruh. DOJ is never going to be a winner in any case. I'm gonna be honest. There's always going to be one side that's completely pissed off. There's always going to be the other side. And it comes down to it. Judge is an idiot. We get that. We get that. That's what <laughs> That's what I deal with. Uh did I have fun? Yeah. I did have fun. Uh I think that's the the biggest part of it. Um I enjoy doing these things. I enjoy looking at the information that we have in front of us and trying to make a decision based upon uh, the facts that they have because we see things completely different than I see them. Uh, it's, uh, it's a completely... Like, I understand there's limitations and there's circumstances that we work within in the DOJ. Getting those limitations and circumstances in a way that is easily communicated is an art that... I think really unfortunately has been forgotten over time um i think that there is and has been an issue uh i'm going to say from a doj perspective is that we've had a lot of judges that have come they have gone uh what their expectations were have changed over time um uh, what the ways of handling things have changed because there's been different judges there's so many of them whether they be a newer judge, an older judge, a season, whatever the hell you want to call it, one person gets one way of doing it. And that's one of the issues that I have continually fought against is this whole revolving door of judges. Uh, because it, as much as we want to have some consistency with things, it gets said for one way and that one person may only have one case that one month and not have another case for six months. And on top of that, they're going off the information that one judge that told them that had very little or no information based upon things that they can do in the past um, or context and they may want it a certain way and now that other person does it a certain way because that case that happened six months ago uh, so when you go into all these things and consider like I still do believe at this point that it was never a good idea to just have Judge Carousel um, I think <laughs> what we should be doing is still Looking at those that have proven themselves and being trusted people to make the decisions that need to, uh, given the information that they need so that God forbid, you know, Hey, uh, we all know we're on the same page with, and I'm not trying to pick up someone else's pieces that they did months and months ago. So we spoke heavily against this in 2.0 going into 3.0. Um, we wanted to try it obviously in 3.0. I think this is one of those things that we tried. We understood probably wasn't for the best interest. And then we, I, I don't know what their thoughts are going forward, but I would heavily suggest not doing it again. So I don't know. There's different outcomes. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Everyone has different uh, burdens of proof. Everyone is different. Every judge is different. Um, how I prefer things is more the old school way. Um, I like having people actually give testimony. I like people being able to pick apart statements. I like having that. I don't like having this report put on my desk and say, here, determine what you want. That is not to me a very interactive court experience where i can say all right here we go guys uh i'm gonna put this document together i mean and this isn't to follow anyone i'm saying this i don't enjoy that as a as for an rp perspective you go to court to have the back and forth to have that sort of can you poke holes in it when it's literally i just want to point out the testimony or point out the evidence given it's like pfft. I could do this whole shit out of character, which I don't want to do, right? There's so much that happens in an out of character perspective from judges' sides that people just don't understand uh, between search warrants, between subpoenas, between either summary judgments, between scheduling, I mean, all that shit that happens on an OOC perspective. God forbid when we have the opportunity to put it in character, show up, let's go. Put on your be fucking best foot forward and make it happen. Be interesting with it. Don't just tell me to do a summary judgment live in character. 
that's what I want to say about that because that shit is not how any of us, I think, find core interesting. <sighs> they have the fines back? They should, yeah. Anyway. Um, yeah, that is TJ time. Uh, I'm going to make some lunch time. <laughs> I'm going to make some lunch. So that's probably going to be it for me for today, chat. Um, I appreciate y'all. Thank you all once again. Uh, if you're new to the channel and want to join our Discord, discord.gg backslash docwizard. Thank you for all the individuals here that uh, provide the server boost so that we can have the customer or custom uh, URL with that. I thank you all. Uh, appreciate it. Once again, if you're new to the channel, just hit the follow button for me. Uh, yeah. Spanner, 102 gifted subs in the past day. Let's get some hearts up in chat for Spanner. Lady Niffler, five gifted. Anonymous, another five gifted on top of it. Hey, I appreciate you all. Thank you for being here. Uh, I'll probably be on TJ later. You guys will probably do I Spy TJ and the shit that you all do. <sighs> Maybe we try again to actually get another warrant or I just let it go and just accept that. Frankly, it's a thing. So, all right. Hmm.